So just when you thought you were watching porn, as it turns out then, the porn companies are watching you as well. Well, sort of. So if you've ever noticed that you Googled a new TV or looked up a new house and then suddenly every website you visit, you see ads that correspond to that TV or house and, and felt completely annoyed. Privacy in the modern age, does it even exist? The reality is if you're on the internet, you literally might as well be on the front page of the Globe and Mail. What data are governments and corporations collecting about us? Really, privacy didn't exist for millennia. We lived in small clans, in caves, and if somebody did something in the other part of the cave, you got to see them. And we went from caves to small villages where people lived with 20 or 30 people and everybody knew everybody's business. And then eventually, during the Industrial Revolution, people went and lived in cities, and that's actually when anonymity began to develop. And that lasted pretty much up until the Internet age. As you fast forward, what you see is the social effect of being able to communicate in this computer-mediated way. For more than a decade, you've been uh, warning the mass public, or at least informing them, that privacy is dead. Get over it. And in that time, people have consciously been putting more and more information about themselves online. What do you think this has done to contribute to your message of privacy being dead? Well, the truth is people care less and less about privacy, or at least they act as if they do. The greatest amount of data that's being compiled on each of us today is self-contributed. But we're starting to see some other, let me say, unsettling things. There's an infrastructure in place in the United States and worldwide that NSA has built in cooperation with other governments as well that intercepts the vast majority of human device-based communication. Well, imagine if the same were true with that one porn site that you went to that one time. Sure, that one time. Similar to that Ashley Madison leak that Lindsay just mentioned, the same could be true for every porn site in the world. And according to the Wall Street Journal, that should have about 30 million Americans a little bit worried. The easy access to information that it ushered in changed the world. And sure, if it hadn't been uh, Bryn and Page, it would have been someone else with a similar algorithm. But can you imagine taking someone from 1996, never mind Victorian times we had earlier, just 1996, and showing them today? A small little magical device in your pocket that can answer 99% of all your questions about the world and 99% of all your requests for media. But that reports your location to the police constantly so they can look you up if you need to. And then you've, you know, you've got any number of instant ways of communicating with people around the world, nearly anyone in the world, all of which is monitored all the time by shadowy government agencies. Uh, your location, your likes, your dislikes, your religion, your sexual orientation, uh, how you vote, where you live, who your friends are, who your family is, uh, what music you listen to, what books you read, all sorts of things that frankly are, are a window into your soul. All of these things are self-contributed. I can go to your Facebook page and obtain information equivalent to what people would pay a private investigator $10,000 a few years ago to go out and gather. You have consensually put it up there for the whole world. I think they could be a bit more forthcoming about what they're doing. How vulnerable is our personal information? Who has access to it? Is it just the telecom company? And are Canada's privacy laws strong enough for all this? What? what? There's no escape from, from prying eyes, it seems. If, if our secret porn fetishes aren't safe, what now? What now, since 2006, we've known that there are microphones that are activated in your computers. Microphones that can hear a dog barking, that all of a sudden you get a dog uh, food ad, or to hear a baby <laughs> crying. This is the least of your problems. And by the way, just look at your Google searches alone. Look at the words you've tapped into. 
Porn is the least of your problem. In an interview with RT, Julian Assange stated that uh, U.S.-based social networks provide information to the Secret Service if they request it. Could that be true? Well, it's more than true, and it's not just uh, it's not just social networking sites. First of all, they don't need to provide anything. It's right there. The Secret Service certainly which specializes in computer crime and computer activities is certainly smart enough to have one of their tech services people go online and look it up on your Facebook page or your Twitter feed or your YouTube feed or whatever. Uh, I, I don't think that the Secret Service needs the permission of these sites, but in fact all of these sites do cooperate with law enforcement, and I think they should. And it's not just social networking sites. Google is is so intimately enmeshed with the US government that we have roughly the same orders of magnitude increase in access to information. Let's propose some slightly fanciful technology that is about as fanciful as Google would have been all the way back over there. Let's do a talk from Deconstruct 2030. And it would start a little bit something like this. Teenagers are becoming telepathic. Privacy is dead. Um, does privacy still exist? Do we live in a world where anything's private anymore? I'd say yes. You could say that being a privacy commissioner, of course, I have to say that there still is mm -hmm. privacy. I do believe there is still privacy. I think not everything that we do is necessarily exposed. If we look at recent health privacy legislation, you can still go to your doctor and be reasonably assured that, you know, unless there's some huge glitch, that what you see to your doctor, your medical tests, et cetera, will stay as private as they did before. Now, there are some, some screw-ups because of the type of technology that's the carrier for this, other than the, you know, the, the cards in the doctor's offices 30 years ago. So there are vast areas where we still have privacy. And I'm not just talking about, um, I hate to use this word, I was going to say benign uh, parts of the U.S. government. That sort of implies that there are not benign. And that's not what I need to say, but Google, in fact, does have a relationship with the CIA. Google has a very close relationship with the NSA. Uh, Google has a back door that they make available to the Secret Service and to the FBI. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but it is something that, that people should be aware of. And why is it that you want... Uh, people to know about this, that their privacy is, is going away. Why are you telling them all this? Well, I know it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that as a, as a private investigator, as the owner of an investigative agency, I'd be delighted by this. And I am. And I am. I take great advantage of this. And all the people who post their photos and their whereabouts and their families and their friends, you know, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Uh, me talking about it is not going to stop these people. They're going to motor ahead and continue doing it. I just think it's, it's in certain respects, un-American for companies like Google and Facebook to be aggregating all of this data on each of us without people really being aware of the ramifications. What this court order does that makes it so striking, it's collecting the phone records of every single customer of Verizon Business. It's a government program designed to collect information about all Americans, not just people where they believe there's reason to think they've done anything wrong. We have a system of pervasive pre-criminal surveillance where the government wants to watch what you're doing just to see what you're up to, even behind closed doors. The reality of working in intelligence communities that you see things that are deeply troubling. Privacy is deeply under assault. Technologically, it becomes feasible to track you in more ways than anybody could imagine. Every time you click like on Facebook, there are computer algorithms that can figure things out about you based upon what you like. So if you like certain musicals, they can say you're more likely to be gay, and they've actually run studies on that at MIT. So we're all leaking data and we're being segmented by large data companies that store this data, often very insecurely, with very little regulation, and we don't know how that will play out in the future. There's this whole dynamic in which privacy is rapidly eroded 
but we don't have a good set of social conventions that tell us what we should be doing with this kind of technology and how we Now the question I have for you, Manila, is are you talking about free porn sites? Are you talking about paid porn sites? Are you talking, not that you would know this, but, <laughs> do, but there is a difference between, for example, Ashley Madison, where you're actively involving yourself in something like Facebook, where you sign up, or are you just scouring? And by the way, Manila, do you have on your regular computer a piece of tape or something that is hiding that little camera? Because in addition to what you are browsing in terms of your porn, imagine it is collecting in real time your um, viewing such. I mean, this is, not you, mind you, but where <laughs> have you been? Well, Lionel, I, I do have tape on my camera because, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of these things. <laughs> yes. Now we can live anonymously in great big cities like Toronto or elsewhere in the world and carry about our business with total freedom in one sense. On the other hand, then you have this phenomenon of online tracking the whole digital world that will be able to track your positions, that will be able to analyze every, every tweet that you send, every Google search that you make, every email, um, if they choose to or can. Let's tick off a few boxes because I think it's, it's some of the areas where, where people wonder. We should be treating each other. How do we evolve appropriate social conventions for the environment that we are not only living in but creating? Privacy is very much a fundamental human right and I think we should be doing much more to protect it. If we don't act to establish international standards that are widely respected and enforced by strong technology, we may not be able to get privacy back. But today we can. All we need to do is advocate for reform. I've heard people say, if you've got nothing to hide, then you wouldn't try to assert privacy. And my response to that is, if you've got nothing to hide, then you've got nothing to live for. here for just a second yes say something like the Ashley Madison hack did come true uh, what recourse might anyone have and and who would it be against nobody nobody you're voluntarily entering this world I guarantee you you have clicked on to some term and condition some kind of an excuse one of the page upon page of things that we we don't read the lawyers don't either <laughs> and if you go on to this you don't have any recourse now remember what somebody does with this is a different story if you are blackmailed you know it's not that you have a Facebook page it's that yesterday you posted what books you like to read a week before that you posted that you are a Democrat uh, a week before that, you posted your religion. A week before that, you posted that you were coming out of the closet. A week before that, you posted your parents' names. It's not one thing by itself. It's that Facebook, Google. Not only is our computer tracking every little click that we're doing, but the whole Internet, Google, Chrome, name it, is a biometric data vacuum machine porn preferences are the least of your problems <laughs> every single thing about you is going to be sucked up into this collection unit oh Lionel you are telling me basically that all of my devices are basically conspiring against me